In the open ocean, they're fast, fierce, and free. But every year, nearly 3 million tons of mahi-mahi are carefully caught, processed, and shipped thousands of miles to markets you'd never expect. The story of how this happens is packed with secrets you've never seen, and it all starts with a chase unlike any other. Mahi-mahi, known for their striking colors and athletic build, thrive across the warm waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. In the sunlight, their bodies reflect electric shades of blue, green, and gold, creating a spectacle against the open sea. However, beyond their beauty lies a set of traits that have made them a cornerstone of the global seafood market. Fast growth, high reproduction rates, and a wide distribution across tropical and subtropical zones. Every year, approximately three million tons of mahi-mahi are harvested to satisfy international demand. This scale of fishing supports entire coastal economies, especially in countries like Ecuador, Peru, Vietnam, Indonesia, and parts of Central America. In these regions, mahi-mahi fishing is not a seasonal event. It is a continuous cycle, integrated into the daily rhythm of life. Boats leave port at first light, and processing plants operate through the night to handle the constant influx. Fishing operations vary in size and sophistication. Small artisanal boats equipped with simple lines and hooks often work alongside larger industrial vessels fitted with advanced sonar, GPS tracking, and satellite communication systems. Technology plays a critical role in locating schools of mahi-mahi, which roam near the ocean's surface in search of bait fish. Techniques such as handlining and trolling are preferred, both for their effectiveness and for reducing unintended catch of other marine species. Once located, mahi-mahi are caught quickly. Their speed and strength require experienced crews who can secure the fish with minimal damage, preserving the quality required by discerning markets. Time is the enemy in this business. From the moment a fish is landed, every minute matters. Delays can lead to loss of freshness, affecting texture, flavor, and ultimately the price the product can command on the global stage. At the ports, massive ice factories produce tons of flake and crushed ice to meet the constant need for rapid, chilling. Boats returning with full holds are met by teams ready to unload, sort, and prepare the fish immediately. Processing facilities are located close to landing sites by design, minimizing the window between catch and conservation. Inside these plants, workers operate along assembly lines where mahi-mahi are cleaned, filleted, graded, and either vacuum-packed or flash-frozen depending on their destination. Maintaining strict temperature control is essential. Throughout handling, the fish must remain within a narrow range of temperatures to prevent spoilage. Any deviation can compromise the final product, which could mean lost contracts and diminished reputations in competitive export markets. Facilities are subject to rigorous inspections, often adhering to international food safety standards such as AKCP, BRC, and ISO certifications. The complexity of this supply chain is hidden behind what might seem like a simple fillet at the grocery store or restaurant. Dozens of hands, highly specialized machinery, and strict logistical coordination ensure that mahi-mahi, caught thousands of miles away, reaches consumers while retaining its delicate texture and mild, sweet flavor. The intensity of these operations reflects a broader reality. The global seafood market demands not only volume, but also consistency and quality at an unprecedented scale. In the case of mahi-mahi, the ability to meet these demands starts with what happens far from the public eye, on the decks of fishing boats in open waters, under the heat of the tropical sun, where timing, skill, and preparation shape the success of the entire supply chain. Catching mahi-mahi at commercial scale is not a matter of luck or simple technique. It is a calculated effort requiring deep knowledge of ocean patterns, weather systems, and the behavior of a species known for its speed and unpredictability. Mahi-mahi are among the fastest fish in the ocean, capable of reaching speeds up to 60 miles per hour in short bursts. 
Their preference for warm surface waters and floating debris makes them both a target and a challenge for fishing fleets. The chase often begins with satellite data and local intelligence. Fishermen track oceanic features such as temperature breaks, currents, and floating patches of sargassum seaweed, where mahi-mahi are likely to gather. These fish are opportunistic hunters, staying close to any structure that offers shade and a steady supply of smaller fish. Experienced crews know how to read subtle signs, seabirds diving, changes in water color, ripples against the current, to pinpoint where mahi-mahi schools might be feeding. Fishing techniques are designed to match the behavior of the fish. Trolling is one of the most common methods, involving multiple baited lines dragged behind a slow-moving boat. Artificial lures that mimic squid or small fish are often used, their colors and movements calibrated to trigger the aggressive instincts of mahi-mahi. When a strike occurs, the reaction must be immediate. One hooked mahi-mahi often excites the rest of the school into a feeding frenzy, providing an opportunity to hook multiple fish in rapid succession. Handlining another widely used technique involves manually hauling fish aboard using single lines. This method is labor-intensive but offers greater control, reducing injuries to the fish and preserving meat quality. Some vessels deploy both methods simultaneously, adapting based on weather, water clarity, and the size of the school encountered. The speed and agility of mahi-mahi mean that fishing crews must be equally fast. Mishandling can result in lost catches as mahi-mahi are notorious for their acrobatic leaps when hooked, often throwing lures with powerful flicks of their heads. Crews work in coordinated bursts of activity, shouting commands, adjusting lines, and securing fish with gaffs before they can escape. Fishing operations are typically timed to the life cycle of the mahi-mahi, which can grow from a few inches to over three feet in less than a year. Short lifespans and rapid growth make them an ideal target for fisheries, but it also means that timing the harvest correctly is essential to maintain healthy stocks. Overfishing juvenile populations could collapse local ecosystems. So many fisheries operate under strict quotas and seasonal limits based on scientific assessments of stock health. The effort is physically demanding and mentally taxing. Days at sea stretch into long shifts under intense heat, with crews constantly adjusting tactics based on real-time conditions. A productive day may result in a full hold, while a series of missed signs or shifting currents can leave boats returning. With far less than expected, despite the challenges, the reward is substantial. A single successful trip can deliver thousands of pounds of mahi-mahi, fueling not only local markets, but international exports that reach restaurants, supermarkets, and hotels around the world. Each fish caught is the product of a delicate balance between human skill, natural forces, and the instinctive drive of a species built for the open ocean. The pursuit ends at the dock, but the process of transforming a wild-caught fish into a high-quality product ready for global distribution is just beginning. Processing plays a crucial role in maintaining the value of the catch and meeting the strict standards of the world's most demanding markets. Once mahi-mahi reach the docks, the focus shifts from catching to preserving. Freshness is everything, and every minute matters. Immediately after unloading, fish are packed in insulated containers filled with flake ice, maintaining a strict temperature range between 0 degrees C and 2 degrees C. To slow spoilage and protect texture, quality control begins at the dock. Experienced graders quickly assess each fish for size, color, and condition. Only fish meeting the highest standards continue through the premium supply chain. The rest, while still valuable, are routed towards secondary markets where appearance matters less than taste. Inside the processing plants, efficiency and cleanliness define every step. Workers, clad in sanitized gear, move in coordinated teams. The mahi-mahi are gutted, cleaned, and filleted with swift, precise cuts to minimize waste and maximize yield. Specialized knives and automated conveyors speed up the workflow, but human judgment remains essential for maintaining consistency. Processing environments are kept cold, clean, 
and controlled. Floors are engineered for rapid drainage, surfaces resist bacterial growth, and equipment undergoes sterilization between shifts. Air circulation systems filter out contaminants, and strict hygiene protocols leave no margin for error. After filleting, each piece is inspected again for uniformity and quality. The best fillets are vacuum sealed or flash frozen at temperatures below 35 degrees Cenois, a process that locks in moisture and prevents ice crystals from damaging the meat structure. Flash freezing preserves the delicate texture and mild flavor that makes Mahi Mahi so prized. Packaging varies based on the destination. Retail markets often require individual vacuum sealed portions, while bulk buyers like restaurants and hotels receive larger quantities packed with detailed traceability information. In many modern facilities, blockchain technology now links every package back to the original catch, providing full transparency to consumers. Before leaving the plant, shipments undergo government inspections to ensure compliance with international food safety standards. Export documents certify that each batch meets the strict regulations of target markets such as the United States, Europe, or Japan. Through strict control at every stage, processing transforms freshly caught mahi-mahi into a premium product ready for global distribution. Every step, from the first cut to final packaging, is designed to maintain the integrity of the fish and the reputation of those who supply it. Once processed and packaged, mahi-mahi enter one of the most complex stages of their path to consumers, international transport. Maintaining product quality during shipping requires careful coordination, precise timing, and strict environmental controls. First, the packaged fish are moved into refrigerated storage units, often within minutes of final processing. These cold rooms, kept consistently below freezing, act as a buffer ensuring that the product's internal temperature remains stable before shipment. From there, containers specially designed for seafood exports take over. Known as reefer containers, they are equipped with independent refrigeration systems, automated temperature monitoring, and humidity controls capable of maintaining exact conditions throughout the transit. Transportation logistics vary depending on the market. For nearby destinations, products often travel by refrigerated trucks, arriving at regional distribution centers within days. For distant markets like Europe, North America, or East Asia, air freight or ocean shipping becomes necessary. Air transport is faster but more expensive, usually reserved for ultra-fresh, high-end products. Sea freight, though slower, dominates the majority of shipments, offering cost efficiency while still preserving the integrity of frozen mahi-mahi. Throughout shipping, strict monitoring systems track not just location, but container conditions and real-time. Sensors relay temperature, humidity, and door openings to centralized databases, allowing exporters to react immediately if a problem arises. Even slight variations outside the accepted range can trigger corrective actions, such as diverting, shipments to backup facilities or replacing compromised cargo before it reaches customers. Regulatory inspections continue at borders and ports of entry. Customs authorities and health agencies inspect documentation and in some cases sample the cargo to verify compliance with import regulations. Delays during this stage can be costly, risking thawing or quality loss. So exporters work closely with customs brokers to ensure a smooth clearance process. Once cleared, mahi-mahi products move swiftly into cold storage facilities in the destination country, often within hours of arrival. From there, distributors break down bulk shipments and send them to restaurants, supermarkets, and wholesale buyers, ensuring the fish reach consumers in peak condition. Each shipment represents the culmination of weeks of coordinated effort across oceans, supply chains, and national borders. Despite the distances involved, modern technology and precise logistics allow Mahi Mahi to arrive fresh, flavorful, and ready for plates around the world. Beyond its place on the plate, Mahi Mahi supports a range of industries few consumers ever consider. Parts of the fish not used for fillets, such as heads, bones, and skins, are processed into fish meal and fish oil, 
fish meal serves as a high-protein feed for livestock and aquaculture, while fish oil, rich in omega-3 fatty acids, is used in supplements. And pet foods? Mahi-mahi skins, once discarded, are now transformed into durable leather for wallets, belts, and accessories. The unique texture and natural colors of the skin make it attractive for niche fashion markets focused on sustainability. In biotechnology, collagen extracted from mahi-mahi skin finds applications in cosmetics and medical products, valued for its absorption qualities and lower disease risk compared to mammal-based collagen. Even research institutions benefit using biological data from mahi-mahi to study migratory patterns and support sustainable fishing practices. Through innovation, nearly every part of the mahi-mahi contributes value beyond the kitchen. Mahi-mahi's path from sea to market blends speed, precision, and innovation. To uncover more hidden stories behind everyday foods, click the next video now.